Praise God. So we're so thankful that God has helped us reconnect with our roots and rediscover the original purpose that God truly loves us. And he does not desire that any should perish, but that all would have everlasting life with him. And so we want to celebrate that fact and, and, and move forward with God and in this year with new revelation in our heart, new joy, new excitement, new purpose. We want to fulfill God's words. We want to be fruitful and multiply. We want to become the apple of his eye. We want to become a son and a daughter that makes our father proud. Amen. And so we're very thankful that God has spoken to us in the midst of this very dark generation. He has given us the ability to see again. To see through all of the, the facades and all of the distractions. Through everything that would, would keep us from being able to see what God truly cares about. He's helped us to be able to have our minds renewed again. To learn. And so we're thankful for all the words that he said. He has blessed us. In the world. Amen. He has blessed us that we might be able to fulfill his desire, which is to be fruitful. And, and I know each one of us want to be able to leave this morning feeling a, a sense of connection with his purpose again. In a greater way. That every day that we walk with Christ, that every day that we call upon God, not only to take care of us, but to use us, to help us, just as vessels of honor. We have this treasure in earth and vessels. That we would leave here with a sense of fulfillment, knowing that each day mattered. You know, what little part I had to play, it mattered. It made a difference in somebody's life. Whether it was my children, whether it was the rest of my family, brothers and sisters and siblings, or whether or not it was on the job, or even just with each other brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we all want to know that our life has taken the shape and, and taken the form that God has desired for it. One that would bring him glory very uniquely, only as you can. And so today we're thankful for a rediscovery of that purpose. Our hearts are truly to say, God, this year won't be like last year. We're going to do it. We're not going to keep doing the same things expecting different results. <laughs> We're going to take steps of faith each and every day to come out of our comfort zones, to get beyond just where we're comfortable. And so we're going to labor together. We're going to work together in his ministry. He said these harvest fields are white. They're ready for people to know that God loves them. And the only way they can know that God loves them, help me. Share our love with them. The more that we share our love with them, they know. Jesus said this. His words are true, can't be broken. Not one jot, not one tittle. From this law would ever be broken. And Jesus said, By this the world shall know you, my disciples. By your love you have for one another. And so, thank God. We're not here to major on the minors. And we're not here to, to try to make God more difficult to find than he is. He is he's right there. He's that still small voice right in your heart. He's constantly speaking. I know sometimes this world and, and the things around us are roaring louder than him. So it makes it difficult to hear him sometimes. And, and sometimes we, we get frustrated because we, we don't feel we can't comprehend what God's doing. But then we say, God, I give up. I surrender. When I surrender, I find it. And so today, we give up, Lord. You've helped us rediscover our purpose. And truly, you've shed your love abroad in our heart. And we have it to give. And we want to give it. It's all we want to do. And sometimes we get trapped. We get trapped by our circumstances. And we get trapped by all the things in our life. And, and it starts to box us in. And we start to feel like we can't reach out like we want to. And sometimes it's more difficult to just let this love go than it needs to be. And so today we thank God that we can come into worship and say, God, set my heart free. Amen. Set my heart free. So I won't leave this place today bound up by those circumstances anymore. Amen. I'll be able to share your love. Amen. 
that will share well. Amen? So today is not going to be like last year. Tomorrow is going to be different. Because today we have chose to serve the Lord. And to say, Lord, if you be with me, and if you be for me, who can be against me? How can they want to just lash out at me when I'm walking in your love and sharing your love? Now, obviously we're on the wrong crowd. The religious side. They may have a problem with that. Because <laughs> it outshines them a little bit. Which is be honest, okay? It does. It outshines them. Because they think a lot of times serving God is all in the polish of the words that they can say and the actions they can do. But loving and serving God is as simple as letting your heart be free to help one another. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so today, we're just thankful to be connected with real truth. Real truth. True life. Amen. In Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. So bless the Lord. Paul wrote this, and I'll have you turn if you have your Bibles today. I'll have you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And I want you to see how the Apostle Paul was encouraging the saints, the believers, to, to continue to pursue their call in the Lord to serve God and to serve one another. And he says, as fellow laborers, you know, there's no big eyes, no little U's in this kingdom. Amen? We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and so we're celebrating this walk together. We can encourage each other together. You don't have to attain unto a theological degree to be used by God. Amen? Amen. You can serve God right where you're at. He says that even out of the mouths of babes is praise, praise perfected. And we can all praise God. Like everything that hath brought. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I want to teach our babies that. Praise the Lord. I want their arms to go up. And there's no, no more of a beautiful thing than that, you know. When you praise the Lord for them to know, my hand goes up and surrender. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so if you'll read with me today out of 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Paul says, we then, you know, we, us, true life. And those in the body of Christ, worldwide, we are workers together with Him. Amen. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, when we studied just a week ago, out of Ephesians chapter 4, we found out, Paul says, hey, what worthy vocation you've been called to. We've got a new job. <laughs> What's our job? Speak the truth and truth. Speak the truth in love. Amen. It was by hearing the word of truth that I was saved. Because I believed, and it became the gospel of my salvation, the good news of my salvation, is when the truth of God's word was spoken of how Christ loved me, and he gave his life for me. And he paid a price I could not pay for myself. That I surrendered and said, God, if you've taken and paid that price, then I give my life to you. Praise God. And I don't have to worry about it no more. I can't improve upon what he did. I thank God for that, man. That gets you free right away. <laughs> I just cannot improve upon what he did. <laughs> oh, Lord. And so we are workers together with him in this brand new vocation, this new calling. You know, and as little children, we grow in our faith and we grow into to dynamic young men and women of God full of strength. And then some of us have been on the planet a little while and we become a little bit older and more gray hairs and grandbabies. And, and we just, we have wisdom. Mm -hmm. We've kind of been through the school of hard knocks. <laughs> and if and if we've if we've knocked our head up against the wall a little bit, we try to say, hey, hey, settle down. It don't take all that. It's just because we've been there, done that, got the t-shirt, okay? <laughs> We're looking out for your best interests. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so thankful today that we have the ability to share one to another the love of God and the wisdom of God to encourage each other in our walk with the Lord as workers together in Christ. And so we're so thankful that he says here in verse 6, he says, I also, I beg of you, I beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. And we know what he's saying there because we studied out just last week that it's for, uh, or by grace that you are saved through faith. Amen? Yeah. And then out of yourselves is a gift of God. We looked at this, this little tiny aspect of what grace is. And, and maybe for today's lesson, we'll, we'll reiterate. The threefold definition of grace that we've been studying out is what? 
one unmerited favor. I think that's our introduction to God. You know, we say, wow, I didn't deserve this. You're right, I didn't deserve this. <laughs> but God is so good that we receive that anyway. Amen? Yeah. So we see the aspect of grace of unmerited favor. But on the other hand, we begin to, to grow in our understanding of exactly what grace is. It is his operational power. It is his ability. And he's not a stingy God. Amen? He's not an austere man, as Jesus said in the Gospels, right? He's a good God. He gives out His grace because now the revelation here is in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 says what? For by grace are you saved, and that of not, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. God freely give you His operational ability, His power. He's freely given you ability to do. That's why I say we can share God's love. Don't you let the devil tell you otherwise. We can share his love because he has given me his grace and it is his operational power, his ability to operate and accomplish what he created me to do. Praise God. So that's our second uh, part of the revelation. There's twofold revelation on that. So the third part, the threefold revelation of grace is what? Leaves us with nothing but thankfulness. We know that grace is thankfulness. We know that the will of God in Christ Jesus is to give thanks in all things. Things. We have been saved by grace and we continue to thank Him for it till the day He comes to get us. Praise God. Grace is so powerful. There's a lot of teaching that can be done on grace. But today we've received enough to know that we ought not to take the grace of God in vain to no purpose. We ought not to take that unmerited favor that we did not deserve and and his ability that he freely gives us. And the thankfulness that we so should share with him. That's it's interesting, a third part there. It requires my will to align itself with his way. Thankfulness can't be pulled out of me. Thankfulness can't be demanded of me. It's a new birth. Yeah. Thankfulness is something that I offer willingly. Amen? Yeah. And, and that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing to know that God does not want us to receive His grace in vain. To no purpose, to no avail, to emptiness. He wants us to be able to receive what He did to the purpose for which it was accomplished. We know that Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says this. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. We're a new creature. Um, scripture says over in, was it 1 Corinthians? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. I can't remember which one it is right now. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Behold, all things all things are new. Behold. 17. Somebody quote that. Yeah. Therefore, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all, all things, things have become, become new. new. Yep. Amen. We're a new creation. So Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says what? For we are his workmanship in Christ Jesus. We are a brand new creation for a brand new purpose, given a brand new job, a vocation. We are co-laborers, workers in Christ together. Amen. And we don't take that grace for nothing. We, we, we don't receive it to emptiness to have no purpose in my life. No. We say, God, thank you for this ability. Thank you for this unmerited favor. Thank you that I can perform and do what you've called me to do now. I can be a co-laborer with you. I am your worker. I am your workmanship created in Christ Jesus of the good works that God has desired for me to do. So praise God. We see that Paul says that we're not, you know, not to as workers, laborers together to, 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 to lightly take this fact to, 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 to just dismiss this reality. See, we're all natural people. We all sit here in a chair. We all live and breathe, and we all gotta go eat sometimes, and you know we gotta do other stuff too. We're all real people, but the grace of God is something that's spiritual. The grace of God is something that doesn't originate from the planet. The grace of God is something that comes from eternity. And it's something that's given to us as believers, which makes it us different from everyone in the world. We, when we come and we share the truth in love, we are bringing the kingdom of God. Jesus said that, tell them that the kingdom has come near. We are bringing the eternal reality of who God is. Because why? Because I didn't deserve this. And it's God's ability in me to fill me. 
and to help him to speak forth those wonderful truths. And so we share God's word as he prompts our heart by his Holy Spirit. And we affect a change in this earth because we are a conduit from eternity into this natural reality. Amen. Amen. And so we don't take this grace for granted. No. And we don't receive it in vain. We realize without it, we can do nothing. And if you think otherwise, you just join the religious crowd. Because man thinks they can please God by what they do. Yeah. I please God because it's God who works in me, both the will and the do of his good pleasure. I do what God says. My Lord Jesus said to I do always those things my Father shows me. If God ain't showing you to do something, don't get worried about it. Mm. Amen? You only do the things that the, <laughs> the Lord God shows you. I hear some babies yeah. having a good time in here today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God for good, healthy Amen. lungs. <laughs> Amen. Bless the Lord. That's okay. I can preach louder, Evan. <laughs> I don't know if it's open. It's, it's one of these. <laughs> they have a shout fest in there. Praise the Lord! <laughs> Bless the Lord. And so I'm so thankful to see that God has called us to work together. Bless the Lord. We are workers together with Him. And, and we have been renewed in our minds. We have learned Christ. We have begun to receive the spiritual reality that God truly is not just said you're the object of my affection. You're not just someone I want to, to spend eternity with, but someone I want to invest in and I want to have show forth my glory. I'm not afraid to show my glory through your life. Oh, that makes us as Christians go, Lord, I'm so unworthy. And you're right, we are unworthy. But you know what? It ain't about us. It's about Him. Right. And so we can do what we do by the grace of God in us. And you know what? We need to encourage each other in that fact every day. If that's the only thing that we say here today, that's what we need to say. You are God's child. You are the king's kid. And you can do anything. For with God, all things are possible. If you say unto this mountain, be removed, it should be removed. Don't you be sitting there, I'm not worthy to tell that mountain to be removed. Don't you go there. That's to do God a disservice. Go where God has taken you. Where has God taken you? He has set me free. He has renewed my mind. He has told me, and God cannot, he's not a man that he should lie. He has told me that he's given me his grace. He's told me he's given me his ability. Then why should I doubt that I can do anything he said I can do? I should not. So, so we can be transformed from an infant in Christ to a force of God to be reckoned with in this earth by simple faith. And today, I believe this about us. We are of the household of faith. Amen. Today, I'm ready to believe everything this Bible teaches me. Because it ain't for my personal gain. It's for His glory. It ain't for your personal gain. It's for His glory. I can't help it, He said, when we're blessed. We're blessed. Get over it. People want to have a problem with God's prosperity. I don't have a problem with it. He blessed them and then said, now we'll be fruitful. Okay, Lord, fine. That's what I'll do. I don't serve you because you blessed me. You just blessed me. It's a reality i got to live with. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you what. you just got to align yourself with this truth. Don't, don't fight it. That's false humility. God ain't coming back for the tail. He's coming back for a bride. He's coming back for those that are attached and holding forth the head. Jesus. He's coming forth for somebody he can marry. I love my marriage. You know, best thing that ever happened in my life. Two are better than one. And I needed that. And for some graces given, they don't need that. And that's fine. But I'm telling you what, Jesus is coming back for a bride because he knows he wants to spend eternity. He wants to enjoy a relationship that cannot be severed. One that is birthed out of the love. Oh, Lord, we were never worthy. I don't know what he saw in us. The angels never saw it either. Couldn't figure it out, but we know now that God is using his church to declare even unto his own ranks, the rank and file in eternal places, I love man, and I will have him.
Think about that the next time you want to just let your flesh have its own way. Yeah. God loves you. He wants to spend eternity with you. We're not just mere men. We're not just natural people. We've been given grace, a deposit, an investment from our Heavenly Father. From eternity, we can bring it to bear here on earth. We can reveal His will. We can do His work. And we can change this world. Right. And we change this world one life at a time. Right. It starts with our own children. It starts with our own families. And then it starts with our own jobs. Every one of us have all those things in common, unless you're rich. <laughs> <laughs> Every one of us have those things in common. And so that's how we change our world, one life at a time. <clears throat> Praise God. So today, Paul has encouraged us to not receive that grace that God has for us in vain. Amen. Look. Today is the day. Now is the time of salvation. And so I'm ex so excited for that. Let's, uh, <laughs> these are really going through today. Let's wrap up with these thoughts. He says that we are not to give any offense in anything. That the ministry not be blind. The ministry is God's outworking in your life. He says, but in all things, this is what we're to do as co-laborers with him. We're, we're to be approved and approve of ourselves, approving ourselves amongst each other, encouragement amongst one another, accountability amongst one another. Amen. That's what that's all about. But in all things, approving ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses. These are not shout you down type things, are they? But they're the realities of life. Things come against us, I guess, all the time. This morning, oh Lord. It was a rough morning. <laughs> but it's behind us now behind us. All the things the enemy wanted to try to do to try to derail God from coming in and ministering to your heart. You know, we've pushed out by prayer and by faith. Amen. And so today we find that truly we have to as his ministers, co-laborers, working together with him, we have to have much patience in our afflictions. That we're going to experience distresses. Some of us in days gone by where they didn't have the freedom to worship have experienced stripes and imprisonments. Verse 5. We ought to be a people that are, are watching. Verse 5 again. Watching. Taking note, observing what's happening in our world. What's happening in our, our community. What's happening in our relationships that we're a part of, so that we can be that minister, that servant, that son of God, or daughter of God, that can reach out and share love. Yeah, that's a tough word there. <laughs> it fastings. Denying ourselves. Sometimes that's a tough thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Push that plate away. Not just fastings of food, but life. Push that desire away, that thing I gotta get done, want to do, you know. <laughs> Where does the way out? Those are the things we may need to sacrifice sometimes. For the greater cause, being able to serve God and serve one another. Right? He says, let's let's as the ministers of God serve God in pureness. By pureness here in verse seven. No, six, I'm sorry. By pureness by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, amen? Mm -hmm. By love unfeigned, that means untainted, not hypocritical, not, you know, just concealing its own hurts and agendas and, you know, love unfeigned, love that's pure, love that's honest, love that's simple, love that's open. Not a love that's masked or veiled or tainted with its own agendas. And as the ministers of God, we know that as we function in that kind of love, by the Holy Ghost, 
that the word of God that he's given us, he'll bring everything back to our remembrance always. It's his promise. That we should be able to speak that truth in love that as we've been encouraged in our new job. By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right and on the left. By honor and dishonor. By evil report and good report. As deceivers and yet true. As unknown and yet well known. As dying and behold, we live. As chastened and not killed. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing, and yet possessing all things. We are the ministers of God. I love how he states those things because to the one side of this world, they look at us and they see the negative. But we as the children of God, we know that we experience all power in those things. So when people think they're persecuting me and stealing my joy and stealing that life of vibrancy I have with it, no, they only know that what they don't know is they're only empowering me. Yeah. Empowering me to just press through and continue to love them despite themselves because Jesus had to endure even the greatest affliction when they were taking them to the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It was a joy that was set forth. Amen. That was the reason he endured that cross. So we grow in our faith and our walk with God. It isn't about everything going our way, amen? Mm -hmm. As co-laborers together, we'll cry with each other. And we'll celebrate with each other. We'll rejoice with each other. We'll, we'll do the good things and we'll walk through the bad things. Because God is good. <clears throat> He'll be glorified in our lives. Because we're not of the people and of the sort that would just give up. We will continue to trust him and let him take care of us. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, his blessing will continue to unfold in our lives. And the fruitfulness you so desire, that he commanded. He said, be fruitful. Be fruitful. So you can't help it. I always say this morning, I can't help it. I can't, I can't help it. it. God said it. You God can't help it. I'm sorry. You just got to believe that. I can't help it. I'm blessed. Because God said it. That's just the way it is. You got to get that reality into your heart today. I am blessed. Say that I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Do you believe it? Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that? That's what you want. Amen. If you don't believe that, we should pray. If you do believe that, oh, we'll pray anyway. <laughs> Will you pray with me today? Father, we thank you, Lord, for your blessing. It came before you stated that we should be fruitful. Your blessing is bestowed upon us because you love us, even while we were unlovable. Lord, we can't help it. We're blessed. But, Lord, we don't, we don't just take a truth and run with it. Lord, it's all about the blessing. Lord, oh, Father, look at it. We're just blessed, 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 blessed. I know we're blessed. We're blessed because we can hear your voice. Lord, we can sense your presence. Lord, we can know when we ought to connect and, and to cry or to rejoice with each other. Lord, we know by your spirit how to be one, which is something I could not do before you came into my life, Lord. I know how to be one with my brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, so our hearts are, are broken now for those that don't know you because you love them. You love them just as much as you loved me before I came to you, Lord. And so, Lord, now we just thank you that we are your co-laborers, your workers together. By your spirit, Lord, that we are, we are your vessels to share your love with folks. And so, Lord, today we thank you, Lord. Yes. We're blessed. We're blessed because you love us. We're blessed because, Lord, you take care of us. We're blessed because you know everything about us, Lord, even the number, number of the hairs on our heads. You said, you know those things, Lord. You know we have needed before we ask, Lord. Lord, we're blessed. We're blessed. We're taken care of by our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. We're so thankful, Lord. And so this morning, Father, we rejoice in that. We rejoice that we don't have to struggle whether we're loved, whether we're accepted, whether we're blessed, whether or not we can do what you called us to do. We know we can. It just requires faith now. It requires me to take what you said and begin to believe it and put it into action. Mm -hmm. and so this morning, Father, I, I pray, Lord, those that will pray with me, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would now help us to activate those things that we believe. 
that our faith may be pleasing to you, Father. <clears throat> Lord, take those thoughts. This is not going to be a, just another year. We're not going to go another year, Father. Now, especially knowing. <laughs> knowing what you've called us to, Lord. Called us to be your co-laborers. Called us to be fruitful. Called us to be one with you. We're not going to just take that for granted, Father. We're going to know, Lord, the gift you've given us, the grace that you've given us, Lord, that you desire to use it. So, Lord, I pray this day we'd walk out refreshed, renewed in our mind, ready to bless, ready to love, ready to encourage, ready to not consider myself before I consider others. Lord, because that's why I get stuck. Get too worried about ourselves. I pray today, Lord, we'd be ready to get free. Free of worrying about ourselves. I know that's tough sometimes. But Lord, it's liberating. So we thank you, Father, for this, this encouragement this morning. We thank you for the support and this, this, this time together. In Jesus' name, we ask, Lord, that you just refresh us or renew us, Lord, to your purposes now. Lord, let us be found to fulfill your grace, which is to give thanks. And so, Lord, let us, let us give you thanks in all things. We thank you for this morning. We love you in Jesus' name, the same sense. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.